Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add products to a ClickFunnels funnel. So let's just get straight into it. So first things first, you need to make sure that you're on a page type that actually allows you to create products. That is order form pages, OTO pages, and downsell pages. Those are the page types that allow you to create products. And you'll see a little products option up here when you're on that particular page or step versus if you're like on an opt-in page, you won't see the option to add a product. So that's first and foremost, you need the correct page type. And I've seen people not have the correct page type and not know why they can't add products, but that's why. You need order form, OTO, or downsell page to add products. Then you just click on products here and you just kind of follow the steps here. So we'll go through it together. So add a product. And first things first, you need to go ahead and select your integration. And if you haven't already integrated a payment processor with your ClickFunnels account, you're gonna have to do that first. Like I've integrated PayPal and Stripe. Uh, Stripe's a big popular one. So if you're unsure, I recommend just going with Stripe. That's, it plays nicely with ClickFunnels and gives you all the options and flexibility. So Stripe's my recommendation. You can also go ahead and set up a subscription or a payment plan or a one-time product. I'm just gonna go with one time for this particular example. However, if you wanna do a subscription, like it has its own little prompts and it's pretty self-explanatory once you get into like the product details and the pricing and everything. Like you'll see, it'll ask you like, how many payments do you wanna want people to make or how much and how frequently and all that stuff. So it's pretty intuitive. For the sake of example, we're going with one time. And then if you do have a an affiliate, or if you do have the Platinum ClickFunnels plan, you can also support affiliates and get that connected as well uh, as you set up your product. So anyway, I'm gonna go save and next now. And now we're moving over to the product details page. So this is where you go ahead and you, you know, write down the details of your particular product. So I'm just gonna call this one test product one. And then we go ahead and set our price and we have a minimum price of $1. So you gotta charge at least $1. I'll just say $10 for right here. Go ahead and select your currency. And then we have price display override and I'll explain what that means with another example. So you'll see what it looks like. We'll go with like the default settings here then we'll come back and kind of play with it. Next we have shipping origin address. So if you're shipping your product out and you wanna go ahead and add this information, you can go ahead and do it here. It's not necessary, but it can help with the customers if they wanna get in touch with you and things like that. So it's completely uh, up to you. Billing description. So this is what will appear on your customer's credit card statements alongside your company name that you set in your payment gateway settings. So if you wanna go ahead and define your product here, so test product, one so that way if somebody is looking at their credit card statement they'll see like your company name so crazy out marketing and then test product one so they'll be like oh yeah i did buy that from that company so i recommend going ahead going ahead and filling out the billing description information a uh, product description i don't know where this information goes like i've never seen it shown anywhere it's not shown on a statement or anything so if you want to go ahead and fill out a product description here by all means go for it but i don't know where where this inf info goes then we have the option for a bump product and we'll talk about that in a minute here. We can also go ahead and set product inventory limits. So if you wanna go ahead and set a max inventory or pre-sold inventory or anything like that, like you only have a limited amount available, you can go ahead and set your inventory here. For the sake of example, I'm gonna leave this off, but it's pretty self-explanatory and you can kind of tinker around with it. If you have a limited availability product, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and next now. And then we have product variations right here, and this is a bit of a newer feature and it has some limitations. For example, it does not work with two-step order form. So if you wanna use a two-step order form, you cannot do product variations. And I'll have another video on product variation because you know it's handy with e-commerce stores or physical product stores like they're selling t-shirts, for example, so you can have small, medium, large, different colors, etc. So it can be very handy for things like that. But again, it doesn't work with the two-step order forms and there's a couple other limitations, but I'll shoot another video on how to use product variation. So if you're interested, look for that video. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, come over, hit save and next, and we get into membership. So if you have a membership integration already connected to your ClickFunnels account, you can go ahead and flip this switch here and you can go ahead and integrate a membership for example, I have a Thinkific website here, so I could integrate that Thinkific website with ClickFunnels if I have that, if I wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave it off for now. You can use ClickFunnels membership platform as well. So we'll go ahead and hit save and next now. Now we're at the fulfillment email section. So should we send a fulfillment email? So 
if you want ClickFunnels to send an email to your customer on your behalf, then you go ahead and you turn this on and it'll automatically send out an email to your customer once they buy the product. So of course this can be handy when it comes to things like product delivery. So if you wanna email somebody a link or something like that, then this can make it very easy to do. Now one thing to note, this email is gonna come from a ClickFunnels email address. It's not gonna come from your email address or your business's email address. So that's something to point out and to be aware of. But of course it is easy to set up. So you have some pros and cons with it. But anyway, if you wanna go ahead and do it, you turn on the switch, subject here's your product. And then we go ahead and throw in the message body down here. So thank Thanks for buying. Here's how to access the product. And then we can throw a merge tag in here. So we have product thank you page down here. So if we copy this and throw it in right here and we can go ahead and send people to our thank you page or our membership page, assuming we've set one up for the product. So the, the page or the link it's gonna dynamically insert right here is whatever you select down here. So if you have a membership area you wanna send somebody to, you could go ahead and select the membership area or if you have a thank you page set up that you wanna send somebody to, you could go ahead and select that. So for sake of example, I'm just gonna throw that membership area in there like that. So that I'll automatically insert a link to the membership area so that person can go ahead and create their account and all that type of stuff. So I'll go ahead and hit save and next now. I'm sorry, but I told you a little bit of a lie. So if you've configured an SMTP service with your ClickFunnels account, for example, if you configure Mailgun or SendGrid with your ClickFunnels account, well then your fulfillment email will come from whatever SMTP configuration you select right here, which is under your funnel level settings area, SMTP configuration. So if you've set up SMTP service you can select your SMTP configuration, which will send your fulfillment email through that service. Now, if you've not set up an SMTP integration, well then it's gonna come from that ClickFunnels email address. So I'm sorry for any confusion. And now we're on to follow-up action. So if we turn this on real quick, we see that we can go ahead and integrate with our autoresponder services that we've integrated with ClickFunnels. So I could go ahead and integrate with like ActiveCampaign or Aweber or ClickFunnels internal or whatever. So basically this is how you're gonna add somebody to your autoresponder after they buy one of your products. Also, you could go ahead and use your automation tool to send like the fulfillment email. So if you went ahead and you set up an automation and ActiveCampaign uh, for that particular product, you could just add that person to your ActiveCampaign account and give them that tag and it'll add them to that automation and that could be the fulfillment emails. It really depends how you want to handle it and how sophisticated you want to get. Of course, the fulfillment email option is very easy to do. Alternatively, if you go ahead and integrate your automation tool, well, then you got to go over there, set up an automation, and then you can go ahead and connect it and integrate it, all that type of stuff. For the sake of example, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'm going to go ahead and do save and next and we get into shipping now. So if you've integrated with a third party shipping service, you could go ahead and flip this switch right here and you could go ahead and select, you know, your integration. So if you're connected to Shopify or Kanaki or Dis Delivered, you could go ahead and select that here. And for this particular example, I'm not going to do that. So I'll flip this switch off. So I'll hit save and next now. And then we come over to summary here and it gives us a summary of our product and we make sure it's all set up like we think it should be set up. And now we can go ahead and return to the product list. And just like that, we've gone ahead and set up a product. So if I come over and preview my funnel real quick, hopefully we can see my product. So I'm on my order form page. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up my page or step. And I have a two-step order form here, which again is why I did not use the variation because variations don't work with the two-step order form. We'll hit go to go to next step and there's my product. So test product one, $10, and we have credit card information, expiration date, etc. Now you may also notice that I have a bump offer here on my order form. So let's go ahead and set up a product for that real quick, just to go through the, the steps real quick. So let me do add product and I'm gonna go much faster this time because I think you understand the, the concept here. And we'll just say bump product and we'll charge five bucks for it and we'll leave all these settings like the default and I'm gonna turn on bump product here and that this basically associates this particular product with the bump offer on, on my sales page. So save and next. And now I'm actually gonna go ahead and do save and close because I don't need to fill out any more of these options here in order for my bump product to work. So if I come back over to my page and I'll go ahead and refresh it real quick. And now I'm gonna go over to step two real quick and see if this works with us. So if I click this button here, I should see an option pop up down here saying that the bump product has been added to like my order here and it should show that, show that it's $5, but running 
running into an issue so this is good we'll go ahead and troubleshoot it real quick in case you run into issues with your products not showing up as well so anyway let's come over here to our funnel and what we want to do is go to the funnel level settings and this is the first thing we're going to go ahead and check we want to make sure that we've connected our stripe account properly and we see that is saying please select a stripe account so make sure you have a stripe account selected so there we go and while we're here we might as well turn on test mode as well so that we can go ahead and test out our funnel and our products and all that stuff and then we're going to come on down here save and update settings and so that might have been part of our problem but let's come back over to our order form now and kind of resave things to refresh it so i'm going to go ahead and edit the page real quick and i'm going to come up here and hit save and then back out of it and then I'm gonna click the little gear icon for my variation. And I'm just gonna hit update page right here. And that like force updates my page. Now I also wanna point out that it could take a couple minutes as well for it to like process. So if it doesn't work right away, give it like a five minutes and it should, it should update. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up now. Let's see if it's updated. And I'll close out of my old tab. And we see now that I'm in test mode. So that's a good sign that seems to have updated. So if I come in here and I go to step two now and I click on the bump offer, we see that it adds the bump off or the bump product to my order. So there we go. So I'm glad I ran into that error there to show you to double check to make sure you're connected to your payment processor. Uh, turn on test mode if you want to test your funnel, of course, and then also how to force refresh your funnel. And we did that by opening the page in the page builder, hitting save. And then we also went to the variation, the little gear icon, and we just hit update uh, variation or something to that effect, whatever it says here, update something, update page. So we click that and then we waited a couple minutes and there we go. So if you have issues with the product not showing up or not working correctly, try those steps. All right, last thing I want to show you real quick is that that custom name or whatever for the pricing. So let me just come in here uh, to edit my product and go to product details and I'll kind of point this out real quick. So right here we have price display override. So let's just say we want to do a free offer and free plus shipping offer. So it would be free plus $10 shipping and handling. And we, we set the price up here to $10. And so I'm basically manually typing out the price down here and I'm adding some extra words around it. So let's come over to our funnel or let's save it real quick and then come over to our funnel and see if it went ahead and updated anything. So let's come back out here. And it took about five minutes for ClickFunnels to update my pricing changes here. So that's one thing to note. If you're having trouble with your products updating, just give it some time. It seems that ClickFunnels takes a few minutes to update things when you're messing with products. So just point, point that out real quick. But we see now that I've gone ahead and customized how my price shows up. So it still charges the individual $10 because that's the price that I set, but I can change how the amount looks. So if you want to customize the amount, that's how you go ahead and do that. And of course you can go ahead and add additional products to this page by simply coming in here to the products area and adding additional products. And then of course, if you have OTO pages or downsell pages, don't forget to add products to those pages as well. And that's pretty much it for adding products to Clicks Funnels Funnels. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.